if you don't use the CPU. Okay, so next one oh. is going to be um, Evan Craig is going to be talking to us about tracing containers, syscalls using BPF. Thank you for coming, everybody. Can you hear me fine? Yep. Cool. So I will talk about uh, Inspector Gadget on Trace Loop on tracing container syscalls using BPF. Uh, my name is Alban. Uh, I am at uh, Kinfolk. At Kinfolk, we do uh, low-level Linux development. We have a Linux distribution, uh, Kubernetes distribution as well, and we do cool uh, things on top of that with uh, BPF. So um, today, I'm talking about uh, stress, Kubernetes, and BPF. I really like to use uh, stress as a debugging tool. Um, how many of you like to use stress? <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> like? No. No? no? OK. <laughs> well, I, I like it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I still find it useful. So um, I like to use it to find out what my applications are doing. Um, so I will present first uh, the trace loop software. Uh, what it does is trace system calls, a bit similar to trace, but done in a different way. Uh, with, it uses C groups and BPF and it uses overwritable ring buffers that I will uh, explain a bit later. And then uh, I will talk about Inspector Gadget, which is uh, kind of um, uh, something on top to use Trace Loop and other things uh, on top of a Kubernetes cluster. So Trace Loop is a common line tool or demand that you use on one machine, and Inspector Gadget is on a Kubernetes cluster. If you are interested by those projects, you can join the um, Kubernetes Slack. There is an Inspector Gadget uh, channel there. So it uses BPF. Um, so BPF basically is a bytecode that um, you can write your program in C, compile it with C long LLVM into uh, BPF bytecode, and you get an um, object file. And you can, use, um, you can upload this object file into the kernel with a BPF system call. And then the kernel will first verify that you don't do anything bad, because this code is running in the kernel. So it will be dangerous if it was uh, cool access to any kind of kernel memory and so on. So there is some verification, strict verification there. And then the BPF program will be allowed to run and interact uh, sending message to user space through BPF map and uh, use some uh, kernel function that, call, that are called uh, BPF helper functions. So that's BPF in a nutshell. And we will use that for uh, trace loop. Um, so my use case, why do I want to use a stress on Kubernetes? Um, sometimes when something crash, I wish, oh, I wish I run that with stress to see what are the last system call it does, but uh, I cannot use stress for every application on all the process uh, in production. That doesn't work because stress is slow, and that's not really the use case that uh, you cannot do that uh, all the time. Um, if I want to use stress on only one application that is going to crash to be able to debug it, um, I don't always know uh, what which application is going to crash in advance, so I cannot re retroactively uh, start the stress program. So the idea is to have a system uh, with BPF that record all the system calls uh, executed by all the applications on Kubernetes and record that in a ring buffer. It's an overwritable ring buffer, so it's, uh, when it fills the ring buffer, it's overwrite the previous events. And then um, this ring buffer is there in memory, and if a pod crash, app, your application crashes, then you can uh, ask, oh, what were the last system calls in, uh, that were recorded in the ring buffer? Uh, so here I compare stress and uh, trace loop. That works differently. Uh, stress use ptrace. Um, the granularity is uh, one process, one or several processes. And trace loop works with BPF on trace points. And the granularity is uh, C group, so I can select the C group where um, I will get the traces. Uh, stress is kind of slow. You cannot really use it for all the process for everything. Uh, but trace loop is uh, fast because we don't actually read the system calls uh, events. Only when something crash or when the user asks for it, we get the last system calls. Um, and finally, stress is uh, reliable. It's uh, synchronous, so it's, um, you, you cannot lose events. Uh, all the system calls that are done by your application will be printed by the stress command. It, it will not forget some. Uh, trust loop is not like that. It, it's possible that uh, some events are lost because it uses a ring buffer, and if, um, if you miss some events, then uh, that happens. And sometimes, uh, you might not always get the parameters of the system calls. 
um, as opposed to P2S uh, using the method with VPF. Uh, in some cases, you might not have all the information, but that's still very useful and good enough. Um, so what I do with uh, trace loop is to add a trace point on the sysenter uh, trace point on Linux. Uh, so every time we enter a system call, uh, this trace point will be triggered and execute this VPF program. And this VPF program will decide uh, with, um, what to do with that system call. It will first look in which C group it is, uh, in which um, pod or which container. And then depending on the container, it will redirect the execution program to another BPF program. So it uses a BPF map of a special kind called um, a program map. Uh, and depending on the C group, it will um, redirect the execution to a different uh, module and uh, log the system calls in a different ring buffer. Those ring buffers are configured to be overwritable. So that's not the default on perf ring buffer where it's stop writing when it's full, but those one is just overwrite continuously. And then when the user asks for it, um, the user can read the last system calls, the last few system calls. Um, so I can do a demo of trace loop on a command line. So uh, trace loop is a CLI command line tool. Is it big enough? Um, it can run as a daemon, or it can run on the command line like this. Here I will specify uh, you will trace uh, whatever process in the, is in a SSHD uh, C group. So let's try this. Okay, now it, uh, it starts to trace. Uh, so I will generate some traffic on uh, SSHD. I, I mean, I want to make it do some system calls. Okay, so now it, I did some system calls. As you see, you don't see any trace here because it doesn't actually look at the ring buffer. Only when I ask for it, we are here with control C, I will get the last system calls from SSHD. So I see it does some socket system call like uh, receive message, select, uh, and so on. And the last few uh, system calls are printed here and I can debug my application. Okay, so that was uh, trace loop on the command line. Uh, now I want to adapt it to uh, Kubernetes. So uh, what do we want for Kubernetes? We don't really want the user to SSH to a node. Uh, usually the user doesn't really care about PID or uh, C groups, but they care about um, uh, Kubernetes pods or Kubernetes labels. So you want to be able to select uh, the thing to debug with a pod or the lab labels. And then uh, the user experience should be something close to kubectl, which is uh, a command line tool for um, Kubernetes and not having had to uh, SSH on the node. Um, it turns out there are already Kubernetes tools doing that. So uh, on the left side, I have some BPF tools, uh, BPF trace, uh, BCC, and trace loop. On the right side, uh, some uh, Kubernetes level tools that use the tools from the left. So uh, that's a really cool project. For example, kubectl trace can use BPF trace on a Kubernetes cluster. On Inspector Gadget, use uh, BCC and Trace Loop as well. Basically, it works like that. When you're on your laptop, you use a uh, kubectl gadget, uh, which is a um, um, client-side plugin to kubectl, and then it will issue some um, um, API calls to Kubernetes. It will not do any SSH or any other things. It will only go through the API server and request some BCC scripts or BPF program to be executed on the node. Uh, so now it's time for another demo of uh, trace loop on um, Inspector Gadget. So here I have um, some Kubernetes uh, pods running on. Uh, what I will do, I prepare here a command to run which uh, will start a new pod with some shell scripts here. So I run my pod. Uh, it computes a multiplication here. And then I um, didn't write my shell script correctly, so I don't see the result. So, uh, but I still have a way to debug it. Even if I delete the pod that I just used, uh, I have 10 minutes left. I can, uh, my pod is gone because I just deleted, but uh, with uh, Inspector Gadget 
trace loop list, I can see the list of the last few uh, traces. And I should be able to find one, which is uh, this one, 28 seconds ago. I will do uh, uh, inspector gadget trace loop show on this. And I should be able to see the last system call that uh, were recorded in the rig buffer. So I can see, for example, that this, whoop, uh, the BC pro process and the shell process were doing the multiplication and printing the output, but um, so I can debug my application here. Okay, uh, so I will show some uh, stop gaps in trace loop that are things that I implemented in trace loop, uh, which are not the perfect way, but uh, I will explain why. So initially, I uh, wrote Inspector Gadget for uh, Kinfox Linux distribution, that's Flatcar Container Linux on Kubernetes distribution. Uh, but then I wanted to make it work on other normal, uh, I mean, older uh, Linux kernels, for example, like a, a Minikube or GKE use uh, 4.14, which doesn't have all the BPF feature I wanted. So for example, it doesn't have uh, this BPF helper function I wanted. It doesn't have Cgroup version 2 enabled by default. And um, there is no proper way from Kubernetes to use OCI hooks. Um, so, but still, the trace loop program works on all those uh, Kubernetes distribution with some hacks or workaround or stop gaps. So instead of using um, the get currency group ID, this BPF helper function that is not available on older kernels, I use um, some custom way to get the ID of uh, namespaces, or Linux namespaces, and then I find that to identify which uh, container I am looking at. Um, I don't have OCI hooks, so I cannot um, add a new uh, module, BPF module for each pod. Um, at the beginning of the container. Uh, and I cannot really use uh, the Kubernetes API to discover a new container because that would be too late. By the time I get the uh, notification from the Kubernetes API or for the Docker API, the container is already running. It's already doing some things calls, so I will, I will not catch the very first system calls. So um, that was an important use case for me to be able to trace the very first system calls because maybe this container crashed crashed in the very first second, and I want to be able to debug that. Uh, so instead, uh, I, uh, I have a pool of uh, BPF modules that are preloaded, and uh, dynamically in a BPF, I link them to a new C group as they appear. Uh, at this time, I don't really know yet which Kubernetes labels there are, or which pod, which container there are, but I reconcile, reconcile that a bit later when I get the notification. Um, so, so far I've talked about uh, Trace Loop, which is one gadget of Inspector Gadget. There are other gadgets for different use cases, um, some for debugging your applications, uh, some uh, ideas which are not finished yet, uh, it's work in progress. I want to be able to see what network connections my, um, uh, my pod is uh, running and be able to help a developer to write network policies. Um, yeah, it's like doing security as an afterthought. Sometimes uh, we have a, we develop an application, we think about security later, and then we think, oh, we should maybe add some network policies or some PSP or something like that. But uh, when the application is already developed, we forgot other architecture, and it's kind of useful to d discover what it's doing and suggest to the developer uh, network policies. So that's not finished work, but that's something I would like to have. Um, I will just do a demo of uh, exec snoop and open snoop. There are tools that are come from BCC, so I just took, took the BCC uh, scripts. Um, so I have the same Kubernetes cluster. And here I run inspector gadget exec snoop, and I will specify the label um, of the pod I want to trace. And here uh, on my three node cluster, I will get every new process that I has uh, executed with, uh, I will see that with exec snoop. Um, okay. I have the same thing with open snoop. Uh, it does uh, trace every time I open a new file. So 
since I run some uh, shell script, it uses libc and so on, and it opens different files. OK. Uh, to be able to do that, uh, I use something I call uh, the gadget tracer manager. Um, this is the thing I want to be able to uh, filter on. So usually I don't want to filter uh, to get the information from other pods always, but I will select either with Kubernetes label or on the specific uh, Kubernetes namespace or a pod name or node or container index when there are several containers in the same pod. Um, so there are all the different ways to uh, filter things. Um, filtering by label is quite important to me because usually when you deploy a pod uh, using a deployment on Kubernetes, you don't know in advance which, what is the name of the pod because um, Kubernetes will create the name with a random uh, suffix. So I don't know the name of the pod in advance and if I want to trace the very first system call, um, I need to be able to, to filter in other ways. So I use uh, labels. Um, so pods can come and go. I don't know their name in advance. And the tracer can come and go too. And I need a system to uh, link them together. For example, this tracer will get this information from uh, those two pods, but not the third one, and so on. So for that, the Gadget Tracer Manager is just a daemon which has a gRPC API and uh, some method to add or remove uh, containers or tracers. Um, so here I use OCI hook restart every time there is a new container I, add, I tell the tracer manager that there is a new container or when one stop and when I run inspector gadget with some um, gadget um, it will tell the gadget tracer manager that there is a new tracer or one is uh, stopped and what the tracer manager will do is to update a BPF maps uh, so there is one for each tracer and this map contains the list of C groups um, that um, the tracer should trace. So the list of containers, basically. And then when I run um, BCC scripts, like uh, exec snoop, uh, I will specify uh, which, um, which BPF map to look at to know which C groups to trace, basically to know which um, um, pod or container labels I want to trace. Um, so if you want to contribute to those, um, I just created a couple of um, labels. Uh, so there are some issues with a good first issue label on GitHub. That's um, things that are a bit more easier or I'm able to help. And there is this new inspector gadget uh, Slack channel that you can join and we can talk there as well. Um, thank you. So now I can take questions. So Alvin, you, you mentioned uh, your locomotive uh, distribution. So what do you need, would you need that for? Is there anything you could, can do with that with, you cannot do with anything else? Um, so it doesn't have anything magic, that's just normal Linux technology. Uh, Twist loop works on others, or older kernels as well. Uh, but for, um, for the other gadgets, I need the last, latest uh, BPF helper um, uh, functions such as get, um, get C group current ID. And I need, um, uh, I did some hack in uh, run C to be able to add or remove OCI hooks. Uh, that's, um, they are work in progress in uh, cryo on container D, I think, to be able to configure that. But at the moment, it's done in a, a hacky way until we get that upstream. Uh, so there are, and I use uh, C group version two as well, um, enabled by default. So each container is in a different C group version two, uh, which might not be the case if you are running other Kubernetes distribution. But although all of that, uh, there are Linux technologies, so you can enable them elsewhere as well. There is nothing really specific to uh, uh, locomotive or Kubernetes distribution. Okay, out of time. Thank you. Thanks.